much for joining us today. You know, my guests today have a lot in common. They all came face to face with death. And guess what? They're here today to talk about it. Now, my first guest says, a simple drive to work turned into a tragic mm, accident in just the blink of an eye. Take a look at this. It was on March 19th. It was a Monday. I was on my way to work. I had uh, just dropped my daughter off to my mom's and was heading on I-15. I'm a very particular driver. I like to watch the time, my mileage, and how fast I'm going to see how much time it's going to take me to get to work. And I also like to watch the flow of traffic. And then the next thing I know, something had struck my car and I was pulling over to the left-hand side. I had no clue what had hit me. I looked to my left and a gentleman had opened up my car door and said, you need to hold still. And then I turned and looked and the window had a great big hole and was shattered. And my airbags didn't go off. I had my seatbelt on. I was in so much shock. I didn't realize what had happened to me. You're coming out of this slight blackout for a second, right? Yes. Somebody's talking to you. Uh, what are you saying, right? Yeah. And then he was going, ma'am, don't move. Ma'am, don't move. Did you realize why he was saying don't move? I had no clue what had happened. When did you find out? When did you consciously know what had taken place? When I turned and I looked at the window and there was a hole and it was shattered, I knew something had happened to me. I just hadn't realized how damaged I was or what kind of, what had hit me. And see, I think everybody in the audience is right now waiting with bated breath to find out what happened. Folks, <clears throat> she's driving down the road. A pipe about this width and about eight or nine feet longer than this went right through the window of her car, right through your face, threw it and in, into the seat. And then you, without even being conscious, pulled this out of your face. Yeah. Now tell them, it, how, what did it take to rescue you? Find out. It took a lot of paramedics, the police. The Jaws of Life, they had to the cut Jaws the roof of off the car. Yeah. You're pulling you up out of here, but still, at this point in time, do you have any idea that this was sticking through your head? No. No. Okay, so they, they, so they, they flighted you. They metaflighted you, right? Mm -hmm. Medevaced you away. Got you to the hospital. When, did, when were you told anything? When did, when did you know? Not until after multiple operations, right? Yeah, well, and they kept telling me at the hospital, and I was still in so much shock. They kept repeating themselves, and I kept asking them, no, no airbags, no, you know, my, I had my seatbelt on tight. I still was not comprehending what had hit me. Well, how many surgeries have you had to undergo so far? Um, I've had the one to sew me up first thing when I got there to stop the bleeding, and then I had two after that, and then I've also had three on the back of my neck. Because let's go again. This went through your face, through your neck, came out right here by your shoulder. Had it been, what, two millimeters further? Yep. To the right, what would have happened? I'd have been dead. It hit a carotid artery, she'd have been dead on, on the spot. Yeah. What, uh, God, girlfriend, what is your, what has the recovery been like for you? It's been very long to me and very hard. How tough has this been on your family? My kids don't want to let, they don't want me to leave them. They've been really clingy. My whole family's been that way, my mom, my dad. It's been hard on the kids. It's been a total life change. When you see yourself now in the mirror, now, I, looking at you, other than I know that you have a little nerve damage, that right now, I hope that the nerves are regenerating, so you will eventually get full use of the side of your face, or that will come back. But when you look at yourself, do you see any difference? Because I swear to you, right now, I, you walked in my door and said, I just had the stick in my face. I say, no, you didn't. So do you, what do you see, though, when you look? I have a hard time with it. Do you? Because you also see the fact that the nerves are not working. I have a hard time looking at pictures of my son found a picture the other day and he said, Mom, it's been a long time since I've seen you really smile. I can't smile anymore, Adam. I have a hard time with that. I love to smile. You know, now, now, do you know if, did you ever get a chance to talk to that doctor who performed all the surgery with Dr. Walker? Yes. If it were not for him, you wouldn't be here today. Yes. Please welcome Dr. Creighton Walker to the show. Come on, Dr. Walker. Alicia. Thank you so much for being here today. Honestly, sit all down. Right. <laughs> Talk to us for a second about this, because this had to be, first off, she's, this shattered everything on this side of her face. Cheekbone, eye socket, everything. The rod went 
through her face right here and fractured all the bones around her eye. Mm -hmm. And then it went through the top jaw and fractured all the top jaw. And then it went through here and fractured all of the lower jaw on this left side. And then it went through and fractured this bone right here, which is called the styloid process, which is right by her facial nerve. And then it went out the back of her neck. So, and it had, your carotid artery runs right in through the that little hole right the there. The carotid artery runs right through that little hole right there. And uh, if that rod had been one to two millimeters more inside her head, it would have transected the carotid artery and she would have died at the scene. What did you want to say to the doctor? Do you want to tell him anything publicly? I think he's the most awesome man in the world. I appreciate everything he's done for me and he's been there for me. Anytime I'm needing him. He's there. Yes. Oh, there you go. Next up, I said, this show is about people who have survived almost the unsurvivable. And when we come back, we're going to meet a man who survived one of the most horrific mass murders of our time. I'll take a break. We'll be back right after this.